Hi there, it's Alexandra from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog and today I'm tagging along with garden designer Jane Beadle to find out how she does her winter window boxes. Jane was a Great British Bake Off finalist and all that creativity that she used creating cakes during the series also goes into her window boxes and her pots and really actually anything she does. So I thought it'd be great to find out what her tips for winter window boxes are. Because the odd thing is, is winter window boxes are a bit different from summer ones. So when I'm planning my winter window boxes, I like to think of a structure that's going to take me right the way through the season. Because some of the stuff that I've bought here for Christmas is probably not going to last through to January or February. Um, because especially these little cyclamens do tend to go a little bit mouldy. So my structure will stay until I replant for my for the summer but then the things I'm doing for the specific sort of festival like Christmas will be able to come out and get replaced with say primulas or something that's in flower that's going to then extend the season so I'm looking for things that will look very seasonal but will then extend right through to May when the summer bedding will come out First, we went along to Meadow Grange, one of our local nurseries, because it's great to go somewhere where there's a really wide choice of plants. When you're in the nursery, you can try out different combinations, put them together on the shelves or in the basket, and we tried out quite a few. So what I'd like to do is go and see what is available. I like to have a bit of height in the window boxes because things are not really going to grow over the winter in the same way as your summer bedding will. So you have to pack it as full as it's going to look all season really. So I look for some height and, and put things in a, a trolley and see how they work together. I do that whatever uh, window boxes or planters that I'm doing and in fact planting a garden. Jane started off by looking for structure and for colour and for something trailing. And in the end, she picked the colour first. There's a kind of magic trio formula for window boxes, which works for summer and for winter window boxes, which is that you shouldn't have more than three colours in a window box. And to remember that green is one of those colours. So when it comes to things we think of as colour, like pink or red or something, it does work better often just to choose one of those. So Jane looked at the cyclamen, which makes a lovely festive window box, and she could have had all red, all pink, or all white, or of course a mix of them, but she decided to go for all one colour and chose the red because of Christmas. The next thing she looked for was height. And there were sort of three finalists with this. We tried out some rosemary, and of course the nice thing about trying rosemary is that it means you can actually use the plants in your window box. And you know, when you do make another window box, you can put them on the kitchen windowsill, you can cook from them. It's a very low waste thing, is to choose herbs. And so we put together the rosemary with the cyclamen and with the ivy, and yeah, that was nice. But we carried on looking and we came across some golden cypresses, which were just lovely, miniature golden cypresses, and they had a very strong shape, which really works in a window box. And also it was a zingy combination with the cyclamen. And then we spotted some eucalyptus, and that's a sort of lovely blue-grey. It's not as structural as the cypress, but it's still a very good evergreen structure. And Jane said that she's going to give me her eucalyptuses when she redoes the window boxes in May, and I've been longing to grow eucalyptus. You can use any shrubs, really. You get some marvellous little mini shrubs in a garden centre at this time of the year that'll cost you £1.50 or, or £2, that of course would be at its mature height would be much, much too big for a window box. But, you know, next spring, rather than chuck it away, you just either find a space in your garden or very grateful friends that you can then hand it over to. We tried out all the combinations in the trolley and looking down at this combination of green, grey and red, we decided that was so festive and also really pretty. She got two other plants in which are structure, something which is generally called barbed wire plant, which created a lovely kind of little textural grey impact, and also a plant which I will find out the name to and I will put in the description below, but which has, it's an evergreen shrub and it has a lovely pink tinge to the leaves. One of the things that Jane pointed out is that plants don't grow in your winter window box in the same way they grow in your summer window box. So you could put plants into a summer window box, you could leave gaps, they don't need to trail very much, and actually within a few weeks the whole thing would have bulked out. That's not going to happen in the winter. So you need to choose the plants at the size you want them and to overpack 
the window box. And so when she was choosing the ivy, she picked out the ones that had a particularly long trailing pieces already, rather than hoping that they would grow to trail. But the other tip she told me about ivy is that you can split it. So two or three ivy plants can actually make a whole load of trailing elements for a window box. Back home, Jane tipped half the compost out of her window boxes because once again, because the plants aren't growing, they don't need a lot of nutrition. So you can get away with only half changing your compost, which in the summer you need to completely change your compost and also feed the plants. However, she did warn that if you've had vine weevil, which I always want to call wine weevil, if you've had vine weevil, you do have to change all the compost and give the boxes a really good clean out. Once she tipped out half the soil, Jane also put in some narcissi bulbs because those will poke up in the spring and they will add another layer of colour and interest to the window box. She's chosen particularly, she does warn that you should choose bulbs which are quite short, dwarf varieties. I love to see the bulbs coming through and if you get a bit more organised than I've been this year, you could put some tulips in as well. So you get the, the daffs, then the tulips coming up. Be careful they're not too tall. Um, go for some of the shorter varieties. But it just gives you that added bit of pleasure and surprise once the spring hits you and you don't really want to or or it is too early indeed to do your summer your summer window boxes. She then added the rest of the new compost and started to pack in the plants quite tightly. Another of her tips with cyclamen is make sure that it's not buried too far deep in the trough. Cyclamen winters tend to be quite damp and cyclamen doesn't really like sitting in wet soil so it will want to drain a bit more than some of the other plants so kind of put it on top, put it, make it the last thing you put in and have it perched on top of the compost really rather than buried deeply into it. Once Jane had completed the window boxes, she said to me that it's important not to water them until you've got them up into position. Because if you water a window box, you're going to find it very difficult to lift and they're heavy enough as it is. There are links in the description below to Jane Beadle's Instagram feed and also to the new cookery school that she's going to be starting near Canterbury and Kent and she'll be doing one day workshops so even if you don't live near Canterbury it'll be a great day out. If you've got any tips for winter window boxes do leave them in the comments below and if you've enjoyed this please do hit like and I know you'd like to hear more about container gardening and if you'd like more tips, ideas and inspiration for your middle-sized garden do subscribe to the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and thank you for watching. Goodbye.